Good morning. Pretty much every single Sunday, we confess and say something like this. I believe in Jesus Christ. He will come to judge the living and the dead. But as we say and confess those things, do we take time to really concentrate on what we are saying? Jesus is going to come again. And that's the focus of our worship service here today, as we are reminded that he will come again and we need to be prepared and be preparing. We'll be following the order of service that is printed in the service bulletin, and we will begin with the singing of hymn 877. We will sing verses 1 through 4. Um, please note that after verse 1, there is no refrain that is sung, but then after verses 2, 3, and 4, there is that refrain that is sung. And we'll find that in the blue hymnal that is under our seats, and we'll stand for the singing of the, of the fourth verse. God's blessings on your worship. We turn to page four in the service bulletin or follow along as it is projected in front of you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, 
both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ for the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and to the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. may be seated. Our lessons here this morning are relatively easy to understand and rather clear in what they are teaching us. They remind us that the day is coming when the Lord will come again. And we need to be prepared. One is prepared by faith in Jesus Christ. But that faith also demonstrates itself in the way that we live according to the Word of God. The first lesson reminds us that that day will be a, a joyous day for the believer, but a day of terror for the unbeliever. Our Gospel lesson reminds us that we will all have to give that accounting before God one day. Our first lesson comes to us from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, reading verses 5 through 10. This is evidence of God's righteous verdict that resulted in your being counted worthy of God's kingdom, for which you also suffer. Certainly, it is right for God to repay trouble to those who trouble you, and to give relief to you who are troubled along with us. 
when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his powerful angels, he will exercise vengeance in flaming fire on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Such people will receive a just penalty, eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from his glorious strength on that day when he comes to be glorified among his saints and to be marveled at among all those who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. This is the word of our God. Alleluia. Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Alleluia. stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel from Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. As they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell a parable, because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. So he said, a man of noble birth traveled to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Conduct business until I return, he said to them. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to be king over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he summoned the servants to whom he had given the money. He wanted to find out what they had gained by conducting business. The first one came to him and said, Master, your mina has earned ten more minas. He said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very small matter, you will have authority over ten cities. The second one came and said, Master, your mina has produced five more minas. So he said to him, You will be over five cities. And another one came and said, Master, here is your mina that I laid away in a piece of cloth, for I was afraid of you since you are a demanding man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, You wicked servant, I will judge you with your own words. You knew that I am a demanding man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Then why did you not put your money in the bank? Then, when I returned, I could have collected it with interest. He said to those standing there, Take the mina away from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. But they said to him, Master, he already has ten minas. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We continue with the singing of hymn 712, which we find in our blue hymnal.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the word of God from the portion of God's word that we direct our attention to here today from Jeremiah chapter 26. We read verses 1 through 6. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, the following word came from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to people from the cities and towns of Judah who have come to worship at the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I have commanded you to tell them. Do not hold back a single word. Maybe they will listen and everyone will turn from his evil way. Then I will relent and not bring about the disaster that I was planning because of the evil things they have done. You are also to say this to him. This is what the Lord says. If you will not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have sent to you again and again, but you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make the name of this city a curse word for all the nations of the earth. This is the word of our God. Well, the, the calendar has turned another page, hasn't it? And my guess is that for many of you, your attention now is being directed to things like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Many of us are probably preparing preparing for where we're going to spend the holidays, how we're going to do that gift exchange, which gifts we should ask for, and maybe where can we find the best deal. Tell me, what are you doing to prepare for the Lord's coming? That's right, for the Lord's coming. You haven't forgotten that he's going to be coming again, have you? Today is the second Sunday in the church season year end time, also known as Last Judgment Sunday. And on this Sunday, the lessons that we look at, they give us that opportunity to be reminded that the Lord is coming again and that we need to be prepared. As we just read in our gospel lesson, we were reminded of the accounting that all people are going to have to give to God on that day. In the first lesson that we heard, we were reminded that for that, for, on that day, for, for the unbeliever, it will be a day of terror, but for the believer, it will be a day of glorious splendor. And now, in the words of our sermon lesson, the Lord urges repentance before that last judgment. But contrary to what we might be thinking, these words are not addressed to people out there, to, to the outside world. They're actually addressed to people who bow down and worship the Lord. That means they are addressed to you and to me. This is serious business. Notice how the Lord brings that across to, to Jeremiah. Tell them everything I have commanded you to tell them. Do not hold back a single word. So let us listen carefully, making sure that we don't miss a single word as we are reminded today to prepare for the Lord's return. So have you ever heard of the man by the name King Josiah? He was a, a king of the southern kingdom of Judah, and of Josiah, this was said, Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength. Sadly, the same thing could not be said of his son, 
Jehoiakim. No, of him it was said, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord his God. And it was at the beginning of King Jehoiakim's reign that a message came to, to Jeremiah with the command to go and speak to the king and to the people. Now, now this was nothing new. Jeremiah had done this before. He would do it again. But nevertheless, this was a key time for a message of the Lord to come to the people because Jehoiakim was just beginning his reign. It was an opportunity for them to be reminded that God was still serious about what he had to say. An opportunity for Jehoiakim to, to take to heart God's message and get his act together. And this was the message. This is what the Lord says. If you will not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have sent to you again and again, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make the name of this city a curse word for all the nations of the earth. Safe to say, this was not a message that the people wanted to hear. In fact, go home later on today and read through the rest of Jeremiah chapter 26, and you will see just how true that is on the basis of their reaction. But it was a message they needed to hear. And with that, we see the first thing we are to do as we prepare for the Lord's return. We are to listen to the Word. Now, it's no secret that God wants His believers, His children, to be constantly hearing His Word. Read through the Bible and take note of all of the different times that you come across phrases or verses or passages that say things like this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God. Faith comes from hearing the message. And if you take note of all the times you come across passages like that, you might be amazed just how frequent they are. And... It's in this word that we are reminded that our God is a God who absolutely despises sin. He will not let the guilty go unpunished. He will not be mocked. Or to put it another way, as we read through God's word, we see that God is a just God. But you know, that's a message that it seems like a lot of people in our world today Sadly, it seems sometimes a lot of Christians and far too often even us. It's a message that oftentimes we don't want to hear. But it is a message that we need to hear. We need to remind it that we are about this big when we stand next to the almighty, the holy, the all-knowing God. We need to be backed into a corner, filled with holy fear, because we know that our holy, almighty, and just God should hold back absolutely no punishment from us, no wrath, no fury, because we are sinners. There is no generic law here. This is specific. Maybe they will listen, and everyone will turn from his evil way. Whose evil way? Yours. Mine. This is personal. And God means business. 164 times in the Old Testament, 48 in the book of Jeremiah alone, the Lord uses this word, turn from, with the idea of repent. That takes examination and introspection. So examine, because when the last judgment comes, my dear friends, the time for repentance will have passed. So examine your, your day, your week, your month, and your year. What, what roads have consistently been leading you away from the Lord? 
if it has been a despising of God's word or, or coming to worship and simply going through the motions, now is the time to repent. If it is a failure to love your wife with a self-sacrificing love or to humbly submit to your husband, now is the time to repent. If the internet information superhighway has offered to you far too many exits to sin, now is the time to repent. If you know more about the latest developments on your favorite television show than you do on the content of the Bible that you so claim to, to hold to and believe in, now is the time to repent. If you have not been willing to forgive, if you aren't doing your homework, if you are a gossip and you keep running your mouth, if you don't obey your parents, now is the time to repent. Now is the time to prepare for the Lord's return and to turn from your evil ways. Don't be fooled. Sin, sin isn't just something that we find playing and dancing and abounding outside of our doors. It's something that we find right here as well. It's not just that we've made a few mistakes here or there, had a little few slip-ups, or we gave it our best college try. No, you've sinned, and I've sinned. Don't try to sugarcoat it. Don't try to excuse it. Don't try to rationalize it. Because you see, if we don't confront and confess that truth, well then the threat of the Lord for Judah will be just as true for us. If you will not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, if you do not listen to the words of my servants, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make the name of this city a curse word for all the nations of the earth. You see, when, when God removed his presence from the tabernacle in Shiloh, the city was absolutely destroyed. They could not stand apart from God. And Jerusalem was going to seal their own fate if they refused to listen to the preaching of the prophets. The Lord would withdraw his gracious presence from them and hand them over to what they deserved all along, destruction. And the same is true for you and for me. We cannot withstand God's judgment if God's grace and forgiveness is not standing by our side. You see, that's the reason why. It's the reason why God gives us and invites us and calls us to turn from our evil ways. But not only to turn from them, but to turn to him. Do you see how, how much God loves you? Do you see how throughout history he has pleaded with his people again and again to turn from their evil ways before the time has run out? Do you see how he's pleading with you today? To turn from your evil ways and to turn to his mercy. Not only does he invite you to turn from evil ways. Not only does he bid you to turn to his mercy, but notice how he has set a, a gracious table right before you. He brought you to this place. He graciously has extended your time of grace that you might know and have his mercy. He has placed the word of God into your hands, at your feet, and into your homes so that you can hear it, so you can read it, so you can listen to it, so you can hear again and again that you are forgiven in Christ so that you can lay hold of the Lord's forgiveness. For you see, while it's true that God is just, the word of God comes to us and tells us that at the very same time, he is incredibly just loving. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And see how he brings us out in a cross with Jeremiah's words? Maybe they will listen, and everyone will turn from his evil way. 
Then I will relent and not bring about the disaster that I was planning because of the evil things they have done. And take note, take note of when Jeremiah spoke those words in his sermon to the people. He places the promise before the threat. And if you're wondering just how in all of the world can God be perfectly just and absolutely loving at the very same time, you need look no further than the cross of Jesus Christ. For there, at the cross of our Savior Jesus, God's entire hellfire hatred against sin and his immeasurable love met. There, on Jesus, God poured out the ferocious punishment that sin deserves, and Jesus, the true Son of God, endured it all. And God accepted that sacrifice as proven by the fact that he raised his son from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. And here's the result. Our sin and its penalty has been paid never to be punished again. But you want to know what unrepentance does? It says to God, don't deal with me on the basis of Jesus' sacrifice. Deal with me on the basis of my life. Impenitence basically says, God, maybe I do want some of your forgiveness for most of my life, but, but this sin, this one or two or three that I really like, I actually love it more than I love my Savior's, my Savior's sacrifice. And so, give me forgiveness for 97% of my life, but for that 3%, I'm just going to keep living that way, and you'll have to just take me as I am. Do you understand why God so lovingly and sternly calls you to repentance? That's why he gives us this message of salvation, to turn us that we might simply receive what he has accomplished for us, forgiveness by a substitute, salvation that we don't deserve, and comfort to stand before God in the last judgment, pleading Christ's perfection, pointing to Christ's cross, and celebrating Christ's resurrection. What a shame it would be if we were found unprepared when our Savior comes again because we actually loved sin more than our Savior. What a shame if we were to be found unprepared on that day because we were so caught up chasing after all the things of this world. For Jesus is going to come again. Of that there is no doubt. Oh, do we know when? No, we don't know when, but we know he will come again. But you know, for the one who's living in repentant faith, there is absolutely nothing to worry about. So, Dear friends, keep your eyes focused. Keep your eyes focused on God's promise of mercy to which the Holy Spirit has turned you. Turn from your evil ways to the ocean of forgiveness in store for you. Listen to his word to your Savior's sacrifice, to the forgiveness that he has won for you that enables you to make your repentance not just words, but a change of heart. And Listen to that word so that tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, you can be constant in your preparation for the Lord's return. Amen. Please stand. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess the Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and the Father, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him in all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. 
Heavenly Father, we confess with sorrow that we have sinned and deserve only your anger and punishment. If you kept a record of sins, we would surely be lost. We confess with joy that your unfailing love has redeemed us, and our hope is in you and in your full redemption. Around us we see the birth pangs of the last days, war, famine, earthquakes, false prophets, spiritual apathy. Use these signs to remind us that we do not know the day or hour when Christ will come again, but that he will be coming. Keep us faithful to your word. Send your spirit to strengthen our faith so that we are always prepared for your son's return as judge. Build our fellowship of love as brothers and sisters in faith. Help us support one another when trials and troubles come our way. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we eagerly wait for Jesus to come again and make all things new. May he find us, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, faithfully enduring to the end through the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, may your grace be with us. And now we come to you, dear Heavenly Father, in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He protects and preserves his church in every age and gives us confidence to lift up our heads and watch for Jesus with joy. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs>
You may be seated. As you personally prepare yourself to receive the sacrament here this morning, you may find the inside cover of the red hymnal to be of benefit to you. We invite all those who have confessed a unity with us by membership in our congregation or membership in one of our Wisconsin Synod congregations throughout our country to come forward to receive the sacrament with us here today. Please come at the direction of the usher, for all is now prepared.
Please stand. We join together in singing the song of praise. Uh, thank the Lord on page 16 in the service bulletin. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our final hymn. If you are using a hymnal, please note that it will be in the red hymnal that is under your seat.
There is certainly nothing wrong with us preparing for Thanksgiving or preparing for Christmas and the get-togethers and the meals. It's just let us be sure that in the midst of our preparation for these earthly things, let's make sure that we are also preparing spiritually for our Savior's return. So as we prepare for these other things, let us also be preparing by listening to God's Word. Let us be preparing by living in true repentant faith. And let us prepare by receiving and laying hold of the forgiveness that Christ has won for us. God bless you as you continue to prepare today, tomorrow, and always that we might be ready for that day our Savior comes again. You will see that there are a large number of announcements in your service bulletin, and I am by no means going to try and um, address all of those. I ask that you take time to look through the service bulletin or take it home if you need to, to see which ones apply to you and which ones are coming up soon. But I did want to, to draw your attention to the ones that are happening this week. So please take note, Ladies of Faith, we'll meet this Tuesday at 6 o'clock here in Black River Falls. Um, please note that we will have our Christmas crafts for kids this coming Saturday. Um, if there's anybody in your life that you might want to invite to that, um, there are some invitations on the white table and the square table in the gathering area. Please grab one and then also hand that out to somebody. And then also take note of the fish event that is taking place this coming Saturday as well from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And then the last thing that I would draw your attention to is the fact that we will have a, a Festival of Friendship Sunday coming up. And um, the information is there in your service bulletin, but I, I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that there are also some postcards on the square table in the gathering area that you can take and use as an invitation to that friend, that relative, that acquaintance or neighbor that you would like to invite to that service. Um, so that will be the 20th of November, but, but also includes the 17th, which is that Thursday service um, prior to the 20th that we have, especially for um, our Deer Hunter weekend. So the rest of them are there before you. God's richest blessings to all of you, and God be with you till we meet again.